Hello travelers, Boardman21 here and now it is time for the fifth out of five new skills that got revealed today and this one is going to be a dive bomb, the final skill that you only get as a falconeer. Now with this one, it has a lot of cool synergies and this one is by far my favorite skill. So let's go ahead and go through all of those notes, discuss them, the synergies, what looks the coolest, and then of course at the end of the video I will have gameplay that shows some of the skills with different synergies setups so that you can see pretty much what it looks like in most of those categories. But let's go ahead and discuss Dive Bomb's original tooltip here. Your Falcon ascends high into the sky and then Dive Bomb's the target location at high speed, dealing a high amount of physical damage to enemies in the area. This has a 7 second cooldown with a 20 mana cost. It is physical, minion, and scales with dex as well. Your Falcon's added damage applies at 500% effectiveness, which is a huge amount of effectiveness. But here's the main thing. Remember the Falcon Tree Tree when you unlock it that's your mastery skill and you can make your falcon scale with your character stats well dive bomb is using your falcon which is using that tree so essentially there's two skill trees worth of damage going into this skill which is pretty amazing because this is a falcon ability so your falcon gets all of his normal damage which scales with your damage and he gets 500 percent added damage effectiveness with it but let's go ahead and go over some of the notes and see just how good this might be for single target damage up on the top, we have Rush of the Hunt. Dive Bomb has a shorter cooldown, so you can use it more often. United Assault gives you a reduced portion of Dive Bomb's remaining cooldown when you use a throwing or bow attack and hit at least one enemy. So if you're attacking with a throwing attack or bow attack really, really fast, you can constantly get that cooldown. Kind of like Volatile Reversal if you've ever used it. The more enemies you kill, it resets a portion of that remaining cooldown every time to where you can almost spam it, especially in high, dense areas. Well, here it doesn't really matter so much about density, although you'll get more hits that way. But as long as you're hitting something, the faster you attack with a bow skill, the quicker you can continue to use Dive Bomb over and over again i really really like that and then don't forget that in the explosive trap node there was one where when our traps detonate you could have it also have the remaining cooldown replenished just like this node which was really cool so multiple ways to get that cooldown down really really fast then we have Featherfall. Before your Falcon dives, it now uses Featherfall that causes razor sharp feathers to strike a number of enemies in the area around the target location. Shadow Falcons will not use this, and you can throw up to 8 feathers. Then we have to Shreds, Featherfall hits, also Shred Armor. Now remember, it specifically says this is before the actual dive bomb, so you can Shred Armor and get some hits in before you come down for that big hit. Then we've got Hindering Beak Strike. Dive Bomb hits, slows enemies, and deals damage in a larger area. Expose their defenses. Dive Bomb hits. Apply critical vulnerability on enemies. So even if your enemies have 100% critical strike avoidance, you're able to reduce that so that they can be critically struck. We have Talon Blades. Dive Bomb and Feather Fall hits grant you a stack of Talon Blades for 18 seconds. This gives you increased critical strike chance and critical strike multiplier per stack but all stacks are lost if you directly use Dive Bomb again. And then we have Gale of the Blades. You move faster while you have at least five stacks of Talon Blades, so you can get 10% move speed. And then we have Explosive Dive. If your Dive Bomb hits your explosive traps, they instantly explode, doing more damage in a larger area. And you can get up to 15% more damage, 50% larger area, and of course it will take away a stack for every one of those detonations that you get. But a cool way to play with traps. Then over here, still down on the bottom left here, Flesh Tearing Talons, Dive Bomb Hits, Shred Physical Resistance. With Red Rings, Dive Bombs Hits, grant you a stack of Crimson Shroud per enemy hit, so you can easily get to your maximum 3 Crimson Shrouds this way. And then we have Insanguinating Strike, Dive Bomb Hits, deal more damage per stack of bleed on the target, up to a maximum. Additionally, it causes all bleed stacks inflicted by you or your Falcon to be consumed immediately dealing instant damage. So your hit damage per bleed is 1%, maximum damage bonus is 30%, and then it will also deal all bleed damage instantly as well on that hit, which is really, really cool. I like that. Moving over here to the right side, we have Focus Hunter for more damage and reduced mana cost. We have Cloud Gather. So if your Falcon uses, if you use Dive Bomb and your Falcon lands inside of Smoke Bomb, it will increase the duration by 40%. That's pretty huge. We have Rapid Pursuit. If Dive Bomb hits at least one boss or rare enemy, you regain mana and recover a portion of your remaining traversal skills cooldown. So on, if you use Dive Bomb on a boss or rare enemy, you get 12 mana back on hit, which is really cool. 
Incendiary Collision Bird Missile. If Dive Bomb hits one of your decoys, it detonates it immediately, causing it to explode and deal more damage in a larger area. What's really cool about this is that's a lot more area for it and damage. So you can literally throw your decoy out. Your decoy, which taunts enemies, can suck them in. You throw a dive bomb in there and everything goes kaboom. Pretty, pretty cool. We have Rending Impact so that you apply bleeds on enemies hit with dive bomb. Talon Knives. If you are dual wielding, a portion of the damage specific stats from both of your weapons apply to your Falcon's dive bomb. This is pretty crazy that you can have 150% weapon effectiveness from the stats on your weapon. Um, that's got to make it really, really hit hard. We have Gaping Wounds. Dive Bomb deals more damage over time per 10% of your increased stun chance. An interesting one. I don't know if there's any other ailments that are based off of that in the game. Then as we work our way to the bottom here, we have Rushing Wings, which gives you increased damage and reduces the delay between the bird taking off when you click the skill and actually hitting the ground, making it attack faster. With a Valkyrie, if you are wielding a spear, you now also leap to the target location where you use Dive Bomb, and this deals damage in the area around the target. What's really cool with this, you can leap with the spear into the, like a big group, and then Dive Bomb comes down and kills them all, which is really, really cool. It's kind of like if you were to use like Fury Leap and have Earthquake go off, it's kind of like that. Devastating Dive, Dive Bomb deals more damage, and stuns caused by it last longer, but it now has a longer cooldown. 72% more damage, that's a big multiplier, with 72% increased stun duration, but it does increase the cooldown by 72% as well. With Day Spray, Dive Bomb deals more damage, and stun enemies it hits for 2 seconds, but it has additional cooldown. 80% more damage, a guaranteed 2 second stun, which I assume is also increased by the 72%, and it doesn't say anything about it not stunning rares or bosses, so this could be really effective against bosses, we'll have to see, but it does add quite a cooldown. But remember, there are multiple ways to get that cooldown to replenish much faster, like up here. When you use a throwing or bow attack, hit at least one enemy, you can recover a big portion of that. And then with two points in Diarchy, a portion of Dive Bomb's remaining cooldown is recovered when you or your Falcon stun an enemy, which you just have a bunch of guaranteed stuns here, so you're going to get a bunch of that cooldown immediately back as long as you stun some enemies with the hit. And then going over to the right to bottom here, we have on Wings of the Shadow, Dive Bomb now creates a Shadow Falcon to strike the location of your own shadows, and it will prioritize your shadows nearest the target location, but Shadow Falcons deal less damage than the real Falcon. The number of Shadow Falcons cannot exceed the number of your own shadows, and I think you can have up to five of your own shadows, so you can have up to five Shadow Falcons, which basically means you're going to get five Dive Bombs coming down, which is really, really cool. Sounds awesome. We have Flock of the Crows. You gain a stack of Dust Shroud for each Shadow Falcon that hits an enemy, as long as they hit at least one, and you'll get up to three stacks per of those hits. A good way to get a ton of Dust Shroud. Remember, Dust Shroud gives you Glancing Blow and Flat Dodge rating. Birds aren't real. A Shadow Falcon takes your Falcon's place that uses Dive Bomb. Your Falcon is able to attack and use other abilities during that. So it allows you to basically have more than one Falcon at once. We have Midnight Avery. Your Shadow Falcons deal more damage per Umble Blade that you have on the ground. And then our last note here, Dancing Shadows. Your Shadow Falcons that land inside the area of your Smoke Bomb take off again after a short delay before diving again at a nearby enemy to deal damage around them. So if you're inside a Smoke Bomb, not only do you use Dive Bomb and then all your Shadows that you have have an extra Shadow Falcon come, they can all do it again. That's just crazy. I really want to play around with those notes. That sounds like a lot of fun, especially for shadows, shadow dagger, anything in that realm. But that's going to be it for the skill tree. I love that there's a lot of synergies here, a lot of different ways to build it. And you can kind of use it in different ways than you would normally think, such as like blowing up your decoy or your traps or such, which is really, really cool. Playing with shadows, all of that's really cool. The cooldown recovery for using other skills with it, I really do like it. And it just has a ton of damage effectiveness for it, so it should be a very hard-hitting skill. But I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with some gameplay. Let me know in the comments below what you think of it. And as always, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Not happening.
not happening. 